Is everybody there? Let's read it. Blow the trumpet where? In Zion. This is our Zion right now. This is our Jerusalem. This is the city within the city. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred what? Assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children and nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out of his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. We are the bride. This is the dressing room. So when we fellowship and gather together, we are being, it's the dressing room. There's a special corporate impartation and preparation so that we can go out. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep before the porch and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord, and do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should rule over them. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? So we hear the trumpet, the call and the sacred assembly, sanctification in the congregation. We are the bride in the dressing room coming out to battle against the ungodly rule. We are coming out to battle against the what? Ungodly rule. Oh, yeah. I want to go back to Hebrews 12, I think. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12, um, 25. See that you do not refuse him who speaks, for if they, do not es if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken of things that are made that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. So know that there are things being shaken. There's things being shaken in your life. God is shaking things. That it, now, it doesn't always mean that it, it's sin. It means that it's not pleasing him. I, I, I you listen. There are things that he shakes in our life that it might not be sin, but it's something that he's not wanting us to associate with. There's things shaking in our life right now. He is shaking those things. He's trying to get us into a place where it's just you and him. You and him. Where you're no longer relying on anything but him. I'm going to close at 1 John chapter 1. Hallelujah. In verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Would you read it with me, please? That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have handled upon, and our hands have handled concerning the word of life. The life was manifested, and we have seen and bear witness and declare to you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested to us. That which we have seen and heard, we declare to you that you also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the father and his son jesus christ and these things we write to you that your joy may be full this is the message which we have heard from him and declared to you that god is light 
and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a prohibition for our sins. And not for ourselves only, but also for the whole world. For the whole world. Understanding as we fellowship together, and we come together in the corporate, there's a special corporate impartation that God is putting in you. You might not comprehend it. You may not understand it right away, but it will come, and it always comes. You know, you, you're in here, we're all together today, but I'm telling you within, it, it may happen to some of us right away. It may happen to some of us right tonight. And for some of us, it may happen four or five days from now that what was imparted will become revelation to you. See, I'm not only in love with his presence, but I love revelation. Why? Because I know my dad has spoken and imparted something in me. And I look forward to it coming to the surface or it manifesting. You know why? Because it brings me encouragement. It brings me encouragement. Revelation brings us encouragement. So we can't allow our expectations to be in a place that are not of God because people get very discouraged when their expectations are not met. Then that means you're trusting in your expectations and not him. Are you listening? In this, it is important to maintain fellowship for a corporate impartation. That was Paul's desire to visit all the churches that have been established corporately to bring an impartation. And it should be our desire to receive it. Amen? Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he will reap. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed be protected by the blood and grow and bear fruit for your glory. And Lord, we just take this time and we ask for your forgiveness and repent for every area where we have come in agreement with the voice of the stranger and forsaken assembling as you commanded and tried to create our own assembly with the things you've not asked us to. So Father, we commit all things to you. We forgive and bless those who persecute us, use us, and speak against us. We speak peace to Jerusalem and Israel and protection. Lord, let her stand strong. Let her stand strong. Let the president be strong in Israel and bring revival to the body of Christ and to this nation and unity in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Be blessed.